Hey guys, in this video we're going to learn about some RC circuits that aren't simple. So to explain what I mean by this, let me have you contrast two different RC circuits. The one on the left is simple, and the one on the right is more complicated. Now, probably you're looking at those and you're like, I'm not really seeing the difference, Mr. Oh, but look very, very closely, and you will see the difference is in, well, it appears to be in the positioning of the switch. The one on the left is a simple RC circuit because the switch allows you to switch between charging and discharging, but in such a way that there's only one path that the current can follow. So, for example, if the switch is moved down to position A, or as it's usually called, the charging position, current flows like so. All right, if I move it into the other position, uh, which we could call position B, well then the capacitor will discharge and current will flow like this. Okay, all right, and so there's only one path that current can follow at a time. However, in the circuit on the right, when this switch is closed, current will flow like, uh-oh, there's a junction and the current will split. Okay, so that really is the main difference here, is the fact that the capacitor is in parallel with something. Right, so it's a, it's a subtle difference when you when you look at the uh, just the drawings of it. Right, it looks like all I did was move the switch around, but really the difference is between whether or not there's a permanent connection versus an uh, versus not. So in this one, there's a permanent connection there, and therefore the current will be splitting any time that it is running. Okay, all right. So since the capacitor is in parallel with something. Uh, you need to analyze it in a different way from our simple RC circuits. So, how do we analyze it? What assumptions can we make to talk about it? And also, what kinds of questions are they even going to ask about it? Most of the time the questions are going to relate to initially, so that would be at time equals zero, or they will ask about a long time later which would be basically plug in infinity for the time. So initially, what assumptions are we going to make? And a long time later, what assumptions are we going to make? And we have to be able to solve for quantities related to those two moments. All right, well, first assumption is this. Initially, the charge in the capacitor is probably zero. Oop, why didn't I draw in a switch there? Well, there's a switch there. So at the moment that we close the switch, we have to assume that the charge on the capacitor is zero at that precise moment. Charge will, of course, begin to accumulate on the capacitor, but at the very moment that the switch is closed, it is probably zero. And since the volts on the capacitor are charge divided by capacitance, if the initial charge is zero, then the capacitor uses no volts. In other words, what you can do is basically act as though the capacitor is not there. If it isn't using any volts, then it can safely be ignored because it doesn't do anything in a loop equation. So the easiest way to analyze this moment, uh, meaning the initial moment that the switch is first closed and charge begins to flow and the capacitor is not yet charged at all, is to redraw the circuit without the capacitor in it which would look like that, when you know, a little tiny drawing down there. Uh, now, of course, in this particular case, what we have is sort of interestingly a short, um, meaning when current begins to flow, it would skip over that resistor because it's hooked up in parallel with zero ohms. Okay, this is kind of a unique situation. Uh, not all RC circuits are gonna be connected up like this, although I would say it is a fairly common RC circuit problem to have a capacitor simply wired in parallel with just a single resistor. However, there's no reason why they couldn't say also put a resistor on the branch with the capacitor, in which case when you redraw it, it wouldn't be zero ohms on this branch and it would be whatever, some other resistance there. Well, look at that circuit that we've drawn. That is a simple circuit. So the goal of redrawing the circuit without the capacitor in it 
is to analyze it at that moment as though it were a simple circuit of some kind. Simple circuits have an equivalent resistance and you can use um, all of the other very simple rules that you know about determining uh, current and voltage to analyze them. Now the other moment that they will ask about is a long time later. So if it's a long time later, uh, that means that current has been flowing through the capacitor for some time and it's, uh, quote, fully charged. Well, if it's fully charged, whatever that means, then that means that the current through the capacitor is now zero. Please note this does not mean that the total current is zero. In fact, current will still flow, just not through the capacitor anymore. So the currents at any particular moment look like these three that I've drawn up here. However, at the moment that we're talking about, that we're now considering, a long time later, if the capacitor is fully charged, then this current is, is gone. And that means that I total and I1 are the same. In other words, a long time later, there's only one current, and it's the same through those two resistors that I've drawn. Now, the current through the capacitor does, even in this more complicated RC circuit, follow the sort of exponential decay shape that we've talked about. The currents through the other two resistors are a little bit different, meaning they're not just going to be exponential decay like the one through the capacitor. Um, we will discuss those a little bit later once we've learned to more completely analyze this circuit. But once again, my recommendation is going to be to redraw the circuit. So if no current passes through the capacitor, that means that we can redraw the circuit as though that branch is dead, meaning this current has now dried up. Right? We've talked about what to do if you have a burnt out resistor. I mean, the capacitor is not, quote, burnt out. It still functions, but part of its function is that current will no longer pass that way. And so now our circuit just looks like this. And once again, it's a simple circuit. And we can effectively analyze it as though the two resistors were just simply in series. Now that current no longer branches at that junction, since none of it is going to the right through the capacitor, I total and I1 are the same value. And therefore, you can treat it as though it's just two resistors in series. The other really important feature of this is that since the capacitor is still hooked up, and note that it is in parallel with uh, the other res this resistor, um, it's going to have to have the same number of volts on it as that resistor, which means that when you want to do things like determine the final voltage on the capacitor, it's going to be related to the volts used by that resistor. So a few things which you absolutely must not do when you are analyzing these circuits are the following. And, and I mention them specifically because every year people do them, even though I tell them not to. So pay close attention. Number one is do not use any of the time-dependent charging equations. Just, you can't use them. They don't work for this kind of an RC circuit. For one thing, because of the way that it's wired, the time constant is not RC. It, as it just isn't. There's some more complicated expression that can be derived for it using a lot of algebra and calculus, but it is not just simply RC. Um, the other th the reason that you can't do it is that the final volts on the capacitor aren't just the volts on the battery. And so none of the time dependent charging equations are going to apply because all of those assume that eventually all the current is zero, and the volts on the capacitor just go to the volts of the battery. Which brings us to our second assumption. Do not assume that the volts on the capacitor are going to be the EMF of the battery, and therefore also don't assume that the maximum charge is EMF times C. It is going to be incorrect. To understand why it's correct, we actually need to reference a loop equation or two. So for this loop, we can see uh, we've got EMF minus, I'm calling it IF for I final, because of course the current changes over time in this circuit. All right, so 
So there, there we have the voltage drops for going around this loop, as shown. And below it, I've written now the equation for the voltage drops going around this particular loop. So what you will notice is that the final volts on the capacitor are related to the final current and the resistance of resistor 2, right? So this statement here, the volts on the capacitor are going to be the same as the volts used by resistor 2 when we reach the final current, whatever that is. If you put those two thoughts together, if the uh, capacitor voltage is the same as this term right here, well, that means that the volts on the capacitor can't possibly be equal to the EMF because of the volts used by this first resistor. So, in fact, the volts on the capacitor will always be less than the EMF of the battery. So if it were, say, a 9-volt battery and a long time later, resistor 1 is using, I don't know, 2 volts, well, that would mean resistor... 2 would have to be using 7 volts, and that's how many the capacitor would get. There's just no getting around it. The volts on the capacitor will never equal the EMF of the battery. And finally, don't forget about Kirchhoff. Loop equations will continue to be a thing, as you have probably noticed throughout this video, as I've been making reference to loop equations. They are the main thing that you use to analyze any circuit, and especially complicated ones. So you need to be comfortable with being able to write loop equations like this one, and this one, and also this one. And let's not forget about junction equations, like that one right there. Now, how are these equations going to help us when we're solving a problem? Well, that's where we have to go back to the assumptions that we made, or that we talked about making, closer to the beginning of this video, right? These equations are true for any particular moment that we want to talk about. They are true. However, there are changes that we make to them based on the moment in time that we happen to be talking about. For example, if we're going back to the initial conditions, where we have that, well then this equation becomes much simpler. And you could therefore calculate the initial current coming out of the battery very easily using that loop equation. And when we're talking about the final conditions, and the current through the capacitor branch is zero, well then we can take that statement right there and simplify our first equation to make the two currents the same and therefore also easily calculate the final current. So the loops together with those assumptions that we talked about are the key to analyzing these more complicated RC circuits. All right, stay tuned for the next video in which we'll actually do an example of a, a particular more complicated RC circuit.